years, at least once a month. Um, okay, so let's uh, get started with Hallel. Um, Hallel, uh, important to know. Okay, well, nobody here is no so. Uh, well, I mean, there is one Sparta, sorry, I can see one person in the crowd. Uh, as far as when they do not say uh, a bracha on Hallel, when they are not saying the entire Hallel. Um, so we, and, and then they say the bracha of not, we say, I share the shalom to the Sivano, we grow as hahalel, to read the hala. And they say, we more as hahalel, to finish the hala. Uh, just something to be aware of. Um, we only uh, finish, okay, sorry. The times when we most often do hala, we actually don't finish hala. Okay, so as an example. Um, on Rosh Hodesh, we don't say the whole hal. On Pesach, we don't say the whole hal except for the first two days and the last days. Uh, Sukkot, we do say the whole hal every day. And the reason for that is because there's a different number of karbonos that were brought every day. And in recognition of the different type of uh, structure of the Musa, we also say uh, a different hal. The, the Gemara says that because the Pariah Chag are different every day, therefore we say how all differently every day. Uh, simple every day, sort of. Right, well, because it was different. It was different in that sense. Um, so that's pretty easy to remember, because you may remember that uh, in every Shemana Esrei of Sukkot, we're always scrambling in Musaf. The Musaf Shemana Esrei, we're scrambling to figure out which, the day, which day we're saying. Right? It's only here in Futzlar, it's because we say the Pariah Chag of that day, we say the Pariah Chag of the day before, because of the sake of the Yoma, because obviously we keep two days in Futzlar, so you just know that when you're struggling with that pariah high to figure out which one you're saying, that's when you do say the whole hal. But otherwise, very often you're not saying the whole hal. Yes. So we started in having the best because our sheet is that at the time we're at Sidorim were like hard to print. The shita was um, not to mention the korban at all because the tefillah was too long. Oh, is that so right? That's, that's kind of how I. That's how it's hard to more fun. Okay. So there's no <laughs> there's, there's no korban. Um, it's just two pages long. That's kind of was four lines right there. <laughs> I forget it, guys. We just cannot handle this. <laughs> it's, uh, it's early. Yeah, happy hour. Most sheets make sense. Dude, to, if you think about it, you don't have to see our book. Most sheets are going to make uh, good amount right, of sense. Right. But, okay. You know. All right. So, uh, how is going to come up most often uh, for the, the average person that comes to the oven on Rosh Hodesh? So, I'm going to sort of stick to uh, the uh, Rosh Hodesh uh, assumptions, but I will also, of course, do what we do on Pesach, Chalhamoe. Well, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, what we do on Sukkot's Chalamoy, what we do on the first days we have to tell them and so on. But you will begin, Baruch HaTadonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Asher Kedishonu Mitzvosov V'tzivanu Likroetz HaLel You always end off the, the first, you always say the first uh, stanza. Mikimi Me'ofarto Me'yashkos Yerim Evyon Ve'oshivim Nidivim and I'm going to share with you some very popular tunes that just about every know, everybody knows, so you're very safe singing them. Uh, one of the tunes that is not commonly done on Rosh Hodesh, but is very often done on Yom, especially on Pesach, because that's Pitzay Sisral, is Pitzay Sisral and you're, if you're with a typical crowd, especially sort of like a shul crowd rather than a yeshiva crowd, sometimes in a yeshiva crowd they'll want to say it themselves. But if you're in a shul crowd, you can, once you finish Mekimi Me'afar Dol, you can launch right into the Tzai Sisral, and everybody will sing along together with you. So they won't say, you'll say responsibly, but you just begin. Tzai Sisral Amim Mitrayim Beis Yaakov Me'amloes Haisa Yehuda Le'gacho Yisrael Amam Shalom Sov Hayom Merav Hayonos Hayarden Yitzov Le'ofor Heorim Merokot Me'elim Kivos Kivneitot Hemalach Hayom Yitzoros Hayarden Yitzov Le'ofor Hey, Hori, Mekir, Kedukhi, Elim, Yivos, Kivin, Eitzon. 
singing mm -hmm. Bnei Yisrael, you would begin with Malacha. Malacha yom kisalu chayardein kisalu yachor heori with your kedush yelim kibos kibetzon milifnei adon achul liyaretz milifnei oach yakov how fiat Torah gamoyim chalom ishlemai no moyim and then a lot of would be skipped on those times when you say chasi uh, halal. Um, I have to tell you something that's just interesting because we're talking about chasi halal. One second. Okay, you got a message, but it's still recording, so we're, we're safe. Um, I was at a shul where uh, there was a, a gabai who was very sort of self important. And he, uh, <laughs> uh, there's no other way to describe it. And he said, uh, we are about to begin Chatzi Halal. The two thirds Halal can be found on page 632. <laughs> and I thought to myself, like, what an novel artist. Like, don't embarrass yourself publicly. Like, I mean, the point of Chatzi Halal is not that Chazal, like, added up all the words of Halal and they said, okay, well, you know, I think statistically speaking, we're at like 52%. We're going to round it down to 58 Halal Chatzi. The point of Chatzi Halal is that it's not the full Halal. So chazi is just the easy way of saying the non-full halal. <laughs> That's a quick note about chazi halal and the idea behind that. Okay. Lolanu yeah. lolanu. Uh, so again, this would only be said on the days where you were saying the full halal. Lolanu adonai lolanu v'shim chotei kavod al chas nekol al amitachom Yisrael b'tach b'avado yezra m'mogi no'amu Beis Aron b'tu b'avado Now you'll notice there's a certain consistent structure in the way you end off the Prakham of Halal. You, you stay low, you peak high, and then you finish off low. So I'll, I'll show you exactly what I mean. Yisrael b'tap Adonai, Ezra m'mogi no'amu, Beis Aron b'tu b'adonai, and you'll find all of the, the paragraphs follow that same pattern. So just to be aware, it's a, a helpful mnemonic device for me anyways. Okay, whether you're doing Chati Halal or you're doing the full Halal, you would say Hashem Zechorni Yivarech. Now, another safe tune that everybody knows, and I'm going to sing it, which you can certainly launch into is Adonai Zechorni Yivarech, Yivarech has face Yisrael, Yivarech has face Aharon, Yivarech Yirei Adonai, Hakanim im Hagdolim, Yosef Adonai Aleichem, Aleichem Yalbeneichem, Veruchim Atem Adonai, Hosei Shemayim Voretz, Shemayim Shemayim Adonai, Veyarez Nasam Neodom, Lo Amesim Yehaldoya, Velo Koyor Deiduma, Anachnu Oh, I was about to go into that. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect segue. The reason why is because people are rushing to get to work on Rosh Hashanah. So therefore, people don't want to hear you sing, except for, and, and I'll, I'll point this out when we get there, um, Hallelujah Hashem and Hodu, and um, at the end of Miha Meitzar, uh, and so on. So those are pretty much for Rosh Hashanah. Those are the accepted places to sing because people want to keep the same down to the minimum because they're in a rush. Uh, so if, let's say, for example, it's Chol um, uh, and it's a, it's a Sunday, that's a perfect example, right? So it's Chol 
uh, Pesach, where you're doing Chatzy Halal, right? But it's a Sunday, so people aren't going to work. So then you're pretty much safe doing more singing. And certainly on the Yom Tov, you're safe doing more singing. For Rosh Chodesh, I would stay away from singing B'Tes Yisrael and uh, uh, Hashem Zafrani Yivoreh. At least if you know you want to be invited to that one again. <laughs> you want to be served bagels after that one. <laughs> okay. Um, now, if you wouldn't be doing the singing for Hashem Zafrani Yivoreh, this is the Nizza. Hashemayim Shemayim Adonai Yores Hasal Yimnei Adom Lo Ameisim Yahalilu Lo Yov and then again on those days where we were saying Bohal Hati Yishman Soman Es Halech Mitnadonoi Be'yar Tzos Tachayim Hem Anti Ki Adaber Ani Oni Sibyon Ani Amarti Bechobzi Kol Adam Kozeid this is another one of those safe tunes, again, not for Rosh Chodesh, but for Yom Tif, for Paul Moyer, for when you have time. And then you, when uh, the T-Bird has said that, 
you said, uh, first, actually, this <coughs> is a place where they say before you, okay? Uh, important to know. So when you finish, they're going to go into Halalu, then you say Halalu, and then you launch right into Hodu. Hodu You say, Yomar no Yisrael ki leolam chazdo. And then the tzibor should say, technically, Hodu ladonai ki tov ki leolam chazdo. Now, very often people don't know that. So when they don't know it, I'll just go on. Uh, so as not to be too repetitive, I'll say, Although technically, what should happen is you say, And then everybody should say, When it's not done correctly, people just uh, say the Holy Blood Shem. So you would say, oh. Yo, uh, Yo, Mar, no, he's trying. People just say, you know, Holy Blood Shem, you don't know, oh, Yo, Mar, no, I just sort of blurred out. Um, it, which is actually fairly common. People don't know how to do that. I, I'll tell you why I saw this not happen. I was uh, with my father in law at a beautiful, restored, historic synagogue in New Haven, Connecticut. My in laws live in New Haven. And we uh, took a hike out to this beautiful shul that's actually very close to Yale. And uh, there was a guy there who clearly had some uh, professional training. It turns out I met him after Dominic. He was a gear and he was trained in opera singing. He, throughout college, he did opera performances. He was on like the, the travel and road show of the school. So as soon as I finished uh, Yom Arna, I heard this guy, Yo ho do la do na ki. And everybody else was like too embarrassed to like mess up. He was doing, oh my God, if we all said, yeah, we better say it. So they all said, who's <laughs> Lashem? And they did it the correct way there. Uh, okay, but anyway, so I don't even go up a Yom or Nabe Saron if people aren't going up. If they are, as they should be, you would just do the, the low part again, Yom, and then you finish with Yom, Runa, Yihire, Adonai, Yom, Chazdo. Now, I'll also give you the straight notes up in case you're, you're doing straight notes for this. So, again, uh, when you finish Pesvech Yerushalayim Hallelujah, the Tzibur will go into Hallelu, and then you'll follow up with Hallelujah, Sabinai Kogoyim, Shabbatu Kolohumim, Kigavar Oleinu Chazdo, Vemez Hallelai Lelom, Hallelujah, Hodu Lalanai Kitov, Kilalom Chazdo. And then they'll say, Yomar no Yisrael ki lelam chasdo. Yomar no Beisaro ki lelam chasdo. Yomar no Yirei Adonai ki lelam chasdo. So the Nusa pattern is one low, one high, one low, one high. Hodu Adonai ki to ki lelam chasdo. Yomar no Yisrael ki lelam chasdo. Yomar no Beisaro ki lelam. Okay, and then uh, they go on to Min uh, The most sung part of Hala, so if you're doing nothing else, uh, it's almost expected. Uh, Seth Katz, um, who's uh, not like one for singing, but he always makes sure he's very mocked at 830 Minion. Uh, so I guess I'm, uh, I work for myself. So I do work, but I work for myself. So I work late, and uh, I start work late. So. Um, no guilt of conscience or anything. No, no really not. <laughs> for all those people, you know, working for the government, show up at six thirty. Uh, I actually had a phone call this morning with uh, some people in Israel at seven o'clock. My wife said to me, "Why are you waking up so early?" And I thought, "Oh my gosh, <laughs> what if I trained her waking up early at seven o'clock?" Okay. Um, so, uh, pistol lead. Well, the, the, a common, very common tune that you're very safe with. Is peacefully share today of a bobodeya. Say, I shall not know. Tell you, give me a bow. Oh, the fuck, he and his son. Patty, he will issue. Oh, the fuck, he and his son. Hey, 
Uh, now, with Ana Hashem uh, if you're doing the Menusach, some people will extend the tune that they use for Pistol Lee. So, for example, I have a favorite um, Pistol Lee, which is actually a, a very old Hasidic tune, a Samajas tune, that goes. Uh, Extends into Ana Hashem Oshiana. Sometimes it happens that you use a tune that naturally goes on to Ana Hashem. Mm -hmm. If not, when you do the Nusla for them, they're all part of one unit. So you would say as follows Ana Donai Oshiana. Sort of introduces the on and then you get strapped. Then you begin the same way, but you go down a little bit. Then. And then you finish off. Pretty much at the end of the uh, howl. Although some people will sing Keliata, so if you really have a lot of time, Keliata Viodeka, Eloi Romaneka, Eliata Viodeka, Eloi Romaneka, O do Adonai Kito, Kiliam Hazdo, O do Adonai Kito, Kiliam which reminds me, very important, uh, if you are davening for the Ahmed on Sukkot and you have the Aramean with you, it's not Shabbos, you have the Aramean with you, the way in which you shake your roll of an estrog is A, the way uh, that the tzibur will follow, so it's very important to get it right, and B, it's different than the tzibur. So for example, um, when you say, Hodu Lashem Kito Kilo Lom Pasto, you may know you uh, are Midag in, in Ashkenaz is to do around, up, and down. So you do Hodu, Lashem, no shaking, Ki, To, Ki, Leolam, Hasdo. But the Tzibur will always shake on Hodu, Lashem, Ki, To, Ki, Leolam, Hasdo. You won't. You'll do Yomar, Na, Yisrael, Ki, Leolam, Hasdo. And then you won't do any more shaking. So it's uh, something to be aware of. You can just you have a, a, an arsenal sitter, they tell you very clearly what it is that you're supposed to be doing. Um, so it's uh, very uh, helpful to know. So again, so on 630, it explains that. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay, but I might have that, and then also in line. Uh, so again, Hodu Lashem Kito, you're going to do Hodu Lashem the way that Sibra will do. They will continue to shake every single Hodu Lashem. You're only going to shake Yomar Na, Na on the Hodu Lashem, because of course you don't say Hodu Lashem out loud. Yomar Na Yisrael, Ki, the long Pesto, and then they, they uh, go on uh, Yomar Na. And Yomer Na Beis Aron and Yomer Na Yerusha. Also, on Hashem Oshiana, you only shake in Hashiana, not in Hatzlichana, right? So the way you do it is Ana forward to the side, Adonai nothing, Hoshia Na, and then again Ana Hashem Oshiana, not Ana Hashem Hatzlichana, not Ana Hashem Hatzlichana, and then of course Hodu Lashem Kito Kiulam Pasto. Which is at the end of this uh, paragraph we just did, everybody will shake as well. So make sure that you're aware of that when you go up there. Uh, if you haven't done it before, it can throw you off because you're used to shaking the way the rest of the seaboard shakes with Hodul Hashem, and you're going to be doing it differently. Uh, and you finish. Typically, you would do full Kaddish over here. Um, when it is on Hanukkah, 
you won't do full cottage because you're going to do full cottage after you've all the sealant. But otherwise, this is the end of shoppers. Typically, uh, you're saying most of if you're saying hollow, and therefore you would do cottage shawling over here. Any questions about hollow? Okay. You lay after hollow. Yeah, yeah. And the uh, the kriya is um, the kind of bed. Of course, no matter how much sinking and assignment you make, you're still supposed to keep your feet together because it's still a continuation of the um, Chazor de Shatz. The hollow? Well, yeah, because from Chazor de Shatz, it was Kadisha land, it's kind of unmuted. Really? That's interesting. I wasn't aware of that. That's, I, mean, that's how I, was I think there are some upset that. that. Yeah. Oh, did he really? Wow. Uh oh. So. Okay, well, thanks. I'm happy you pointed that out. Uh oh. Who buys those shoelaces? Yeah, right. Exactly. Get comfortable. I got to tell you. Times when you have to stand for very long, it can get difficult, like a Musaf Yom Kippur. Mm. Uh, and especially you're not, really, you're not wearing normal shoes. In fact, even, even Rosh Hashanah, my dress shoes are dressy, but really not comfortable. So I wear suede shoes. I know, it's that gorgeous. I wear suede <laughs> shoes on Rosh Hashanah and down to the end of it. Uh, not blue suede, just long suede, uh, because they're my most comfortable shoes. Um, and then Yom Kippur, I, I don't wear any shoes, because I'm in socks and I put a blank, uh, like a, a pulled up towel under my feet. Yeah. Uh, it gets rough. Yeah, it really does. <laughs> and I, I like sort of flat feet, but it's more actually that you I wouldn't know. <laughs> to me, they're just feet. But, okay, thanks for coming out, friends. And uh, I guess we've got a hiatus for three weeks, and then right. we'll be in touch through it. Great. Thank All you. Right.